In this video, I want to introduce the topic of central neurological disorders. Central neurological disorders, or disorders that primarily affect the central nervous system. Because the central nervous system is involved in most of the neural functions, these disorders may lead to abnormalities of either the lower or the higher neural functions. So they may cause motor, sensory, or autonomic abnormalities of body parts that have connections to the part of the central nervous system that's affected by the disorder. Or they may cause abnormalities of cognition, emotion, or consciousness if there's involvement of certain parts of the brain, particularly the cerebral cortex, the outermost layer of the cerebrum. And just like with the peripheral neurological disorders, I like to divide these into focal versus diffuse disorders. So focal or diffuse, and the disorders that cause focal syndromes can affect either the spinal cord or the brain, and many types of pathology commonly cause focal central neurological syndromes, including disorders that fall into the pathology categories of idiopathic, vascular, mechanical, autoimmune, and neoplastic disorders. Even more types of pathology can cause diffuse central neurological syndromes, and these diffuse syndromes are usually related to widespread abnormalities of both sides of the cerebral cortex, the outermost layer of the cerebrum. Disorders that cause diffuse syndromes can include those in the pathology categories of genetic, idiopathic, vascular, epileptic, mechanical, metabolic, infectious, nutritional, and toxic disorders. So there's a very long list of disorders that can diffusely affect the brain. Epileptic disorders in particular, epileptic, which are disorders that involve seizures, can cause either focal or diffuse central neurological syndromes because seizures can start in just one part of the brain causing a focal syndrome and they can either just stay in that spot or they can actually spread to involve most of the cerebral cortex on both sides. Or some seizures can involve most of the cerebral cortex on both sides right from the beginning and cause a diffuse syndrome right from the start. So this is a tough category to introduce in a short video because the central nervous system does so many things that focal or diffuse dysfunction can cause a large number of syndromes and a large number of different types of disorders and pathologies can affect the central nervous system. So this makes this category particularly challenging for, for making the diagnosis of these cases. And I'll just stop here, but obviously there's a lot more details we can go into in later videos.